a teacher one day asked her class what each one of the students wanted to become when they grow up. You can imagine a scene where a teacher would do that. And you can imagine the typical responses of children, right? I want to be the president. I want to be a firefighter, a teacher, and so on. One by one, each of the children answered until it became Billy's turn. I hope no, no one's here Billy, right? It's just an anonymous name. You can fill in the blank if you want to tease somebody. But the teacher said, finally, Billy, what do you want to be when you grow up? And Billy responded, possible. Possible, asked the teacher. Yes, Billy said. My mom is always telling me that I'm impossible. When I grow up, I want to become possible. I want to be possible too. And I want Salem Church to be possible in God's vision. In our sermon series, we've been considering our vision for Salem Church. Who is God calling us to be here and now? How can we best fulfill our purpose and our mission? Last fall at our Cluster Church Conference, the presiding elder asked each person to give a one-sentence description of the congregation that each one of us serves. We weren't given this question in advance, and so my first thought went immediately to this key verse for us today. Because more than anything else, I believe that Salem is a congregation for whom nothing is impossible. And the reason I believe that is my experience of all of you, but also because of this. Nothing is impossible for us because we serve a God who makes all things possible. As a congregation, we know that even in the last few years since I've been here, we have faced many challenges, particularly during the pandemic. And yet, from my perspective, we always acted in faith. We were quick to try new things. And when I would suggest something that I thought might stretch us a little bit out of our comfort zone, you know, we never did it that way before. I never heard our leadership say, we can't do that. I never heard that. Now, you might have mumbled it under your breath and you might have talked about me outside in the parking lot or when I wasn't around. No, I know you would never do that. But I, even if you were saying it, I wasn't hearing it or listening to it. We have a positive attitude at Salem, a can-do attitude. And we believe that all things are possible with God. And as we approach the blueprint for our future ministry together, we place our confidence in the abilities and the possibilities that God presents to us and for us. The dove in this picture that's on our uh, vision board was made by one of our children. And if you've been in my office, you know that I put up a lot of things that people give me and make for me, and particularly gifts from our young people. But to me, this dove, symbolizes our future in the spirit of God. Nothing will be impossible for you. This is God's promise to us as a congregation when we seek to do God's will. In our Bible lesson today, I've used a little different translation, and it reads this way. There will be nothing that you can't do. Now, a lot of times we hear this verse taken out of context, right? Nothing will be impossible for you. But I want us to take a moment to look more closely at how Jesus comes to make this promise to his disciples. 
Now, this passage, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, occurs right after Jesus takes Peter and James and John, and they go up on a mountain, and Jesus is transfigured. His appearance changes before them. And so it is part of the revelation, the revealing that Jesus is God's son, the Savior. But Jesus is also teaching his disciples along the way that he must suffer and die and be resurrected. And they can't understand, they can't put all this together in their minds and their hearts that Jesus is the Messiah, the promised Savior, and that he will endure all of these things. And so when Jesus comes down from the mountain after this experience, it is then that a man comes to him. The man explains that his son is ill. The disciples are not able to cure him. And so the man is now appealing directly to Jesus. And we know that Jesus cures the boy. Now, Jesus is sounding a little critical and maybe harsh in our minds as he talks with his disciples. They had failed. And I imagine that they are not feeling very good about it. In fact, they feel like they have failed their savior, their master. And so they come to Jesus privately and they ask him, why could we not do what you have done to cure this man's son? Jesus tells them that it is because of their little faith, the size of their faith, the impact of their faith, whatever. Jesus calls small, little. But then Jesus uses an image of something even smaller, right? A mustard seed. And Jesus gives them this promise that with the faith the size of a mustard seed, they can move mountains. And that is because God is faithful. And so we place our confidence not in our ability, but our confidence is in God. We act in faith and trust God for the results. Earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus gives this promise. Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be open for you. What are we asking God for in terms of our congregation's ministry? What are we asking God for in terms of the worldwide church? What are we striving for as a congregation? We can move mountains with God. Phillips Brooks was an American clergy in the Episcopal Church during the 19th century. He was well known and published several books of his lectures and his sermons. Most likely, we know him best as the author of the hymn, The Christmas Carol, A Little Town of Bethlehem. But here's a quote that I have reflected on often from him. We never become truly spiritual by sitting and wishing to become so. You must undertake something so great that you cannot accomplish it unaided. Think about that. That we need to take on something that is so great we could never do it with our own ability and strength and power that we must rely on God to accomplish it. As I sat this past week looking out over the vast Atlantic Ocean, and what a wonderful image to think about Ruby sitting in front of the very same ocean. She didn't understand why she didn't see me. But we were both looking at the same ocean. And when I looked out over the ocean, I could just feel the possibility. My friends, we can become all that God is creating us to be. 
So what should we do? Today's scripture propels us into the future to pursue possibilities. Now, alongside of this sermon series, I've set aside some Monday evenings for Bible study. And the Bible study is focusing on the concept of God's mercy and how we then share that mercy in the world. We're building a biblical foundation for the work that we'll be doing in the coming months. And specifically, I want to hear some of the ideas. Maybe you have something in your mind or on your heart that you've wanted Salem to do, or something you've done somewhere else that you want us to try, or, you know, God places things in our minds and in our hearts. And the specifics are beginning to come into focus for me. And I want to give a shout out to our youth group and our young people who, with Judy's leadership, have really been expanding outreach from Salem and trying some new things. And I believe that our young people really challenge us to join them in acting on our faith while we are trusting in God. And they are thinking big, my friends. They're eager and excited to do great things for God. And our young people are essential for our vision as a congregation. Now is the time to follow our vision based on God's faithfulness to us. Jesus calls us to pursue all of the God-inspired possibilities that we can. Look out, mountains. Here comes Salem.